Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Bitter Rivals podcast. We are, uh, what day is it here? It is September 25th. We are coming up on the National Hockey League season. Uh, we have some preseason games to talk about from yesterday. We have a lot to talk about uh, from both so organizations. to talk about. about <laughs> Canadians. So, uh, anyway, um, we might as well get right to it. So, the Leafs had a couple of preseason games yesterday, both against the Ottawa Senators, split squad games. Um, won the first one, lost the second one in true Leafs fashion, but yeah, <laughs> it's preseason. Like people were overreacting. Leafs are gonna leave. Just like it is what it is. The big, honestly, the thing that I cared about the most out sort of either like either of those games. First of all, Callie Arncroke had two goals online with Austin Matthews, so that's interesting to see. And also, uh, Ilya Samsonov went uh, shut out through forty minutes. He only got forty minutes of ice time, but. He didn't allow a goal in the um, second game against Ottawa, which was the uh, split squad that had Austin Matthews on it. He assisted on Yarn Croak's first, but looked just as dominant as, as he always does. I mean, uh, he should. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the, I think everybody in the league can agree, one of the three best players in, in the world. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, hey, but whatever order you want to have that, that's a that's a conversation for a later date. That's a, but... we, we're not we're not getting into that because that's an hour. That's an hour yeah. right there. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so I don't know. I'm uh, there. There's a couple of unfinished, a couple of unfinished pieces of business for the Leafs. Like Sandine still doesn't have a contract, and his camp is kind of being trying to play hardball but like i don't really think they have much ammunition ammunition because if somebody wanted him they would have offer sheeted him so he doesn't really have much of a choice but but to sign the contract that he has with the toronto maple leafs and i think he thinks because of the these injuries like the very very minor one to muzzin and and the one to lilgren where had hernia, hernia surgery is going to be out for a couple weeks to start the season i think three or four weeks to start the season and i think that's kind of field of the fire on, on sandine's camp side because they want to get as much money as they possibly can, obviously, but Kyle Dubas isn't going to make a slapstick decision because one of his guys is out for two weeks. Like, so, like, Sandine wants significantly more than Lilgren, and that's simply not justifiable. And Dubas has finally decided to play hardball with somebody, and it, for some reason it's <laughs> Rasmus Sandine. So, yeah. It's, it's an interesting scenario. Uh, line juggling's been interesting, like, Right now, it's looking like Matthews and Marner probably are going to start the year split up, which is something that I think people, a lot of people probably didn't think they'd, they'd see. Um, so right now, I'm, I'm on Daily Faceoff, which is Frank Saravalli's uh, thing there. And uh, it has Nylander, Matthews, Bunting. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Two two guys had insane chemistry in those games yesterday. Two, gr- two duos. In the first game, it was William Nylander and Dennis Malgan which I didn't get to watch the whole game because I was at work, but I did get to see bits and pieces. And the like, I'm not just looking at the goal that they scored together when I say that. They they were, they were looked to be connecting for a lot a lot of that game. Uh, and in the second game, Matthews and Yarncroke had, had some really, really good chemistry. They seemed to work well together. And again, I'm not just talking about the two goals that Yarncroke scored. It was, they seemed to be a dominant force together. So... I could see something, some sort of mix like this. Think think about it like this. What about Matthews, Bunting, and Yarncroke? Gaudette, Tavares, Marner. I like that line to stay the same. And then Nylander, Mulgan, and Kerfoot. Okay, so I, I have like two, two things on that. One, are you really going to split up Matthews and Marner? Like, I think, is that yeah, really... I think you, I think you definitely do that because the last time you did it, John Tavares almost scored 45 goals. Yeah. Actually, sorry, sorry. I had three things on that. So that, um, I feel like that's just, and I'm, I might be proven wrong here. Um, and I may not know enough about like Cal Yarn Croak, but I feel like that's not a lot of support for Austin Matthews in Bunting and Yarn Croak. Like they're just kind of not at the level you would want for Austin Matthews line mates. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, I do, but look at what Sidney Crosby has done for years. He's taken guys like 
Brian Rust and Zach Aston Reese and Jake Gensel, who is now obviously turned out to be one of the better goal scorers in the National Hockey League. But he's played alongside these guys who really were nothing when they started there. And then they get on Sidney Crosby, who what one of similarity, why I mentioned Sidney Crosby is because Matthews is one of the only star players in today's game that is as defensively responsible as Sidney Crosby was throughout his career. So I don't think he needs that much defensive res- resp- defensive help on that line. He's I'm also not, going I'm not to saying he's defensive Hold on help. for a second. Let me finish. He's yeah. also going to get the opportunity most of the time to start in the offensive zone because everybody knows that if you have a defensive zone face-off, you, you want David Camp for or Ker- Kerfoot's line out there taking that taking that draw you don't want Matthew starting the defensive zone also Cali Yarncroke is an absolute workhorse defensively and he does have a scoring touch Michael Bunting showed last year finishing in the top three for Calder voting that he also is a very offensively talented player so I don't really see what you're saying when it comes to, oh, no, to I just mean that, not being enough for Austin Matthews I, and I, I don't mean this is disrespect to Michael Bunting but I definitely think he benefited from playing with Matthews and Marner and I think you could put nearly any winger in the league on their wing and they'll produce at that level. And that's not just going to play with Austin Matthews. No, no, I get that. I get that. I just feel like, like it's just missing a little star power. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but then like, your next, yeah, the next line out is one of the best playmakers in the league and Mitch Marner and, oh yeah, John Tavares. And then following so, that comes. So this leads to my third point is, are you really going to play William Nylander on the third line? Yeah, he gets his own line. He gets his own line to drive. He gets to be a star. That's that's the idea there. He gets to be the guy that gets a pass from Alex Kerfoot and puts it in the net. Plays games with Nick Robertson, maybe. That would be a, a very, very interesting matchup to see. Or not matchup, but combination to see as Nick Robertson and William Nylander. Like I said, Melgen and him looked fantastic. If they're going to have that much chemistry, you're not going to put Melgen on the top line. Nylander is a guy who can drive his own line. He's also put on some weight and he looks big and it it's good for him because he needs that. He needs to lose the reputation of, you know, pardon my French, but being a pussy. So yeah, I, 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 I think on paper, this forward group, I would say looks better than it did last year. And I, I, well, it's interesting what they've did, what Dubas kind of has done here is he's every year he's added pieces and some of them work out, some of them don't. It seems he's able to get rid of the ones that don't, and he's able to keep the ones that that do work out, like a Michael Bunting or a David Camp. <coughs> you know? See, this daily faceoff has Wayne Simmons on the fourth line, and I just, I don't see it. I'd rather have Melgan on that line, uh, like in the lineup rather than him. It's got Robertson, Kerfoot, and Yarncroke, but I would I would say Nylander and Yarncroke should switch up there, and then... Nylander, Kerfoot, and hey, Robertson's good too. I haven't seen them play together. Maybe they have chemistry. You never know. You have lots. Of, you have a couple more. I think you only have two more actually. Uh, two or three more preseason games to see what what works, what doesn't. But uh, yeah, no, I I like where where this is going, and uh, I'll let you talk a little bit here, and then after I want to get into the Matt Murray discussion, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, That's absolutely. A little bit of things. So uh, I, I feel like with the Habs, you have to start with probably the, the I don't want to say it's the biggest, but it's probably the most uh, important story of our summer, which is that Nick Suzuki was named captain of the Montreal Canadiens. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been inevitable almost since he joined the organization. Uh, he was viewed very highly um, as a piece of the Pacioretty deal. He was kind of the... The, the gem of that and getting to tar and uh, the draft pick that became Matthias Norlinder at uh, Norlinder, sorry, uh, were kind of uh, secondary to acquiring Nick Suzuki. Um, and really, this was just kind of a, it was a when, not an if. Uh, he was always going to be the captain. He was the de facto leader of the team last year with Shea Weber out. Um, yeah, I think uh, he's kind of ripped the bandaid off and just, there's no speculation. There's no, you know, will they, won't they? As he sees the captain now, I like it. Um, with Edmondson and Brendan Gallagher as his uh, alternate captains, I like that. Um, and then the other big story out of Montreal uh, is Carey Price won't be playing this season, which sucks. You know, not going to beat around the bush there. It's not It's not fun. But, uh, I mean, we've got Caden Primo, 
who had a phenomenal end to last year in the AHL. Had a great run in the playoffs with Laval. Um, so hopefully it's another good year of development for him. And then we've got Jake Allen and Sam Montembeau, who are going to be sharing most of the net this season, uh, which is, a, I don't want to say solid, but it's just, it's, it's okay. Like they're, they're both totally okay goalies. So, yeah. Well, and I know you want to rip already, Nick Suzuki, so here's go for yeah, it. We've already had this conversation, but I don't think that putting the captain captaincy on Nick Suzuki at the ripe age of what is he, 22, 23 years old? Uh, old is he? 20, I want to say 23. So putting putting the captaincy on him, but like realistically, we we had this conversation on this podcast last season when his contract was signed. Yeah. And we were talking about how right now that like I, my argument was this contract, you do, you pay guys for what they are, not what they ought to be. And your argument was, well, you got to pay him for what he ought to be because that's what he's going to be in the bulk of the contract years. Right. Like that's, yeah. And, but you don't know is it, what was, was the argument you can assume and you can think and you can project, but you don't know until it happens. You just don't. A hundred percent. Well, want to know who else doesn't know? Nick Suzuki doesn't know right and now not only does he have to live up to that contract he also has to live up to having the sea on his chest in the hardest market to have the sea on your chest in the world um this is a dude who doesn't know what kind of player he is in the nhl yet how many points does he have what's his mo- what's the most points he's had in a in an 82 game season uh Be up here. It's been a while since I've done this. I forgot to have all my fucking things up. That is okay. Me too. We are back on amateur hour. Here we go. NHL.com. So, Nick Suzuki. In his 82 game season, we have here uh, Uh, 61 61 points. points last year. Okay. So, we have this dude who's still finding his way in the National Hockey League. Who know how now has to answer to French media after every loss that let's be honest this terrible 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 team is going to suffer once again this year and I know you said that he did that last year as well but it yeah. doesn't matter because he didn't have the C on his chest maybe his teammates viewed him as the captain but nobody else did because he doesn't have the C on his chest you're not the captain C- until you are the captain but the it's thing is the, the 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 way he carried himself through last year he based like the the c is a formality at this point he he was the guy when shit was going south very very important to be the formality though like that is what i'm trying to say here is that now it's actually a thing now he actually has to answer for this piss poor team after every loss this year and what how old did we say he was he is 23 years old and like i was saying he was in the basically, hardest market in hockey he was he was doing it last year you know, not because he had to. He wasn't the captain last year. He didn't have to be that guy, but he just he was that guy. Okay. He didn't have to be. He stepped up to the plate and proved that he was the guy. And now he got the C on his chest. And it's like I said, it's a formality. He was he was the captain of the Montreal Canadiens last year. No, Listen, no saying, doubt about it. I'm you not can saying ask, that, you can okay, ask the media about it. The media treated him like that. And the media treated him that he's not captain material. Okay, the French media maybe, but now he has 32 other NHL teams that don't see him as a kid with an A on his chest. Like, you have to get this through your thick skull. He doesn't have an A anymore. He has a C. That's a big fucking difference, Gitano. Seriously, man. Like, it's, I, it, it, you're giving it not enough. You're not giving the C as, as much power as it carries in the National Hockey League. I'm, really, I'm respecting, I'm, I respect, especially in Montreal. The, I respect what the, as a Montreal fan. I respect what the C means. But when you've seen a kid do it already, this is, no, you know, we, we, he had we know he's... It wasn't a C. That but we, literal he, letter here makes a difference. You have to understand that. Come on, you've been I watching think, hockey for 20, 25 years. You have to... You, you Tell me you understand that. I get that. But when, when you see a guy walk the walk already, you know, you know this is just the next step. It's like... Uh, and I don't okay, mean I've been concerned. seeing Morgan Riley walk the walk in Toronto for 10 years, but want to know something? He's not the captain. I don't know. And my first thought when they named Tavares as the captain was it should have been Morgan Riley. But that's okay, another Okay, but story. it's not. 
John Tavares is. So he has to answer for everything. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yes, and I'm telling you that Suzuki did that the entirety of last season without having to be the captain. Okay. You know, he, he could have easily been like, oh, I'm not the captain. I don't have to fucking deal with this bullshit. But like, he was the leader of that room, and he said, I'm going to be the one who takes that step out and fucking, you know, takes this shit on the chin and is the face of this, you know, and takes the brunt of it. And he did. So now, whether, whether the sea was on his chest or not, he was going to be that guy this season anyways. You know, that because that is just who he is as a person. He's just going to be that guy. Okay, but so is Morgan Riley doesn't make him the captain of the hockey team, dude. Like, come on. I, I'm not going to talk about this anymore because we sound ridiculous at this point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, back on track here. I, I think, I'm not saying he should have not ever been named captain. I think that you let a kid find out who he is first before you slap that responsibility on his chest is all I'm trying to say. Because you're not the oh. captain until you're the captain. And now he's the captain. He doesn't have the chance to go back. That's that's it. And you don't have to name anybody a captain. You're not going to win this year. You're not doing anything this year. Go another year without a captain. Reevaluate next summer. Well, it's I not think... that difficult. Of, of, of like just defer it's not that difficult of a decision to make just defer see, but I, I think so really I, what this was, so was, I think, was new montreal leadership coming in and, and trying to make their mark like martin saint louis who came in halfway through the season last year wanting to make his mark on the organization i think it's more about that and less about needing a captain and and wanting this kid to be a captain to be honest with you that's that's from an outsider perspective that's what i see so and so the way I'm seeing it as a fan, as someone who, you know, follows the, the Montreal insiders, you know, very close. Like this kid, like I said, was always going to be the captain of this team. That's just who he is as a person. Whatever team he played on, he was going to be part of their leadership team, whether it was Montreal, Vegas, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, and there are people like that. Um, and I think they look at it as we have this really young team. You know, we're, we're going to be bad. But we have these young pieces that are going to be good in a couple of years Suzuki is clearly the leader of them you know why why delay the inevitable you know you know to if we're going if, 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 if we're going to suck if we're going to suck and struggle this year like you know why not use these years to, for Suzuki to kind of you know take those first steps at being a captain and kind of if he struggles with it because you said he, he already with was it. without having the C on his chest so why does he need the C on his chest you just said that he already was that guy so why does he need the C then that's just extra pressure at this point then right according to your theory that you're just adding pressure by putting the C on him right the, but because I he was already I doing everything I exactly so I don't think there's added pressure I right. don't think there is there definitely is when you put a C on somebody's chest. And if you don't think there is, then you don't pay enough attention. But I, th I think there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a breed of athlete, of person, who just isn't phased by stuff like that. Okay, and from maybe everything, in, internally, and yes. From, internally, maybe everybody can think, yes, this kid's the captain. But everybody doesn't spend every day with Nick Suzuki. The only people outside of the Montreal Canadiens who look at him as the captain of the Montreal Canadiens are people that see a C on his chest. Like, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Maybe internally, you're right. Everybody knew he was the captain. You're right. All the fans, everybody in the organization knew he was the captain. But once you put that C on his chest, now the other 31 teams in the NHL also see him as the captain. Now the uh, all the other 31 teams media see him as the captain. All the general managers, all the coaches, everybody sees him as the captain. Nobody and else I did that. The, the only reason that any, any listeners of this show think like that is because you tell them that. Right? Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. I know, and I get that. But I just, I don't think, at that level, I don't think um, what fans and other players and, like, you know, other GMs and media really influence the players. You know what I mean? Like, like Montreal media hates, hates fucking uh, Zeno Chara with a passion for what he did to Pat Gretti. But, like, is there any extra pressure because he's the guy that like nearly broke Max Pacioretty's neck? Nope, not really. Zeno Chara just does the Zeno Chara because he just did his shit, right? Like, I think Nick Suzuki, yes, you can say, oh, yes, yeah, all the, the 31 other medias or 31 oh, okay. other, you know, organizations are going to see him so differently, 31 other fan bases. You just compared one of the most hated 
hated players in your team, like your team's fan base's history, to a newly named captain. Those that is the most apples to oranges thing I've ever heard in my life. Okay, so who's who else is like a new captain in the league? A new captain in the National Hockey League. I'm just trying to think of guys who have recently got the C. The Trubin missile crisis. Yeah, yeah, Jacob Truba. Like, do you think any differently of him? Because as a fan, and as, I mean, technically, are are we media, technically? Technically. Technically. Do you view him any differently because he has a captain? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Because now he has to, if the the New York Rangers suck shit this year, Jacob Truba has to answer for it every night. See, so I don't, because I, and, and this is maybe me just being like, I don't care. I'm not that invested in any other team you know what i mean okay like, i don't but, i don't i didn't care who the new york rangers named captain you're telling really me it's didn't. not a, you're telling me it wouldn't be hilarious wouldn't be an interesting storyline for you if let's say this this montreal or sorry not montreal new york rangers team who has high expectations this year very very high expectations this year they they did make a reasonably deep playoff run last year they have one of the best goalies in the world yeah. we can agree on that their ex- the expectations for that team are high and yes, I think it was a mistake to name Jacob Truba, of all people, the captain of that team, when you have so many other options like like Fox or or I, I can't even, <laughs> like Lafreniere's there, like who knows what he's going to become, like, you, you know, Z- yeah. uh, Zibanejad, you have Chris Kreider, like there's so many options and you name Jacob Truba. But, but anyway, beyond that. I think it would be hilarious this year. Like, I would be interested in the storyline this year. Absolutely. If they just came out and took an absolute dump. First 20 games of the year. Let's say they win three. Like, how funny would that be if Jacob Truba, of all people, had to come out and answer for that? Okay. That would be fantastic. But, like, if they're... Because because it, he's not... I don't know. If if the, but if their results aren't based on Jacob Truba playing like shit, you know what I mean? Like if they just no, if they he's use the captain of the team, so he has to answer for the team's shortcomings. No, no, no I, get, how, I get that. That's how it works. That's why you have a C. That's why I you get have that a C. aspect. But it, it's it's different. Okay, so I'm I'm taking it as like you're saying like Jacob Truba is playing like shit as part of this, right? Like, yeah, like yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say the difference with Nick Suzuki was last year when everyone was playing like shit, he wasn't. He was the one guy who was fucking not. You know what I mean? Like, there's that's a big difference. And like, oh, like the captain is also playing like fucking dog shit. And oh, the captain's the one guy standing out as the guy playing well. That's a massive fucking difference. Yeah, I just don't under, like... That, like what that's a big issue now like that, that like why make that a storyline what if Nick Suzuki comes out and scores like three points in the first 20 games like think about that and now he has to come like now he's the captain of the team he's got this entire team this 23 year old kid who hasn't even developed completely in the National Hockey League yet now has to answer the fact that he sucked shit for a quarter of the season and that's that like that's not fair to me I think he give him another year for like you're not gonna win anything this year anyway. Who cares? Why do you need a captain? And that's why I, I go that's back exactly, to saying that's that, exactly that's exactly why you put the C on him because who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck anyways? Like right now, like it doesn't matter. We're Montreal not gonna be good media. right now. So Montreal media cares, obviously. That's what they, that's all. They're one of the harshest crowds in the world. Trust me, I'm a Leafs fan. I get it. I've been there. No, I know. I, that's, why they put the, that. that's why they put the C on Tavares and not Matthews. Because they didn't want that kid to have to answer for anything every fucking game. That's just, you know, that's why they did it. Because John Tavares was more prepared for that role. Nick Suzuki's 23. But I also think, I also think the Leafs are a lot closer to where they expect it to be than the Habs are right now. Well, and with all due respect to Nick Suzuki, we're talking about Austin Matthews. And then Nick Suzuki. There's a big gap there, my friend. I, I, I never said there wasn't. So <laughs> we wouldn't even give it to the kid who was Austin Matthews if we're talking about Leafs versus Habs here. And yeah, maybe it was because he pulled his pants down in front of a security guard or something. But maybe it's because we also had John Tavares, who was a 30 plus year old kid who was from Toronto, has already been a captain in the league for a lot of years, knew what he was doing. Maybe that's why too. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Like the Habs don't really have that that kind of guy right now. Brandon Gallagher, you know? has not been a captain in the league, and and that's it. Like, oh, but they he's had, a tried if, and true guy who's a leader on that team. I think we can agree. How long has he been an alternate? Uh, I would have, and I said I would have. I think I said end of last season or some some point near the end of last season that I expected either Gallagher or Joel Edmondson to be named captain in the interim before giving it to Suzuki. But I just you know. I don't hate the fact that they just ripped the Band-Aid off. Yeah, I would have just, I would have just deferred. Anyway, that's enough about the captaincy of Nick Suzuki. He's not worth that much airtime. Anyway, um, you know, and then well, the other big thing in Montreal this year, uh, like we were talking about, about them being dog shit. Uh, we really only have like four like NHL caliber defensemen uh, in our lineup right now. And we had a lot of young players who are going to be playing for their fucking spots in preseason this year. And I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Because, uh, so the one who stands out to me the most, and from what I've seen, is Arbor Jackeye. Le- he has a legitimate chance of making our roster for opening night. He's been incredible in preseason and uh, in training camp. He just looks, he had a fucking monster end to last year in uh, the OHL. Won the OHL title. They went on. I think they lost in the Memorial Cup final. But he was just uh, fucking. He was incredible. Well, we got um, to see him actually play a game against the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. And I forget who it was, but he took a lick off of one of our guys, man, in a fight. He. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he, he, he was a standout player in that game. And like. He and that was, was also... when he was still playing with Kitchener. Am I right? Yeah, that, yeah, he was with Kitchener. That was like right at the beginning of the year. Because yeah, uh, we treated. joked that he he had played preseason for the Habs like two weeks before that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he and he said uh, to one of the Montreal media, he's like, I don't want management to see me as just like a meatheaded defenseman because he is. He's a huge motherfucker. Like he is huge and he lays the body. You know, your typical like Ben Sherratt is like the comparable. You know what I mean? But what Arbor Jack I has. He's got, he's got the feet for it. Like he, he can move, he can skate, and his hands aren't terrible. Like he can fucking make a good pass. He can, you know, start a rush if he needs to. So I think yeah. he's like, he's. I don't want to say he's a lock for one of the spots, but like one of those spots is his to lose for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and That's it, super fun. He's also got one of the best last names in sports, so that oh, also if, helps him in. If if he fucking gets on the team, he's a, I'm 100 percent buying a Jack Eye jersey, like no doubt about it. Yeah, that's quite the handle. Like, what's his Twitter handle? I need to know. Uh, I don't even know if he has Twitter. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, this is going to be an interesting camp out in Leafland too, man. There's a lot of spots that are open, and I really think what's going to happen here, like. So we're going to see some fall off from some guys like Wayne Simmons. I don't think is going to get a lot of playing time this year. There's just better options ahead of him, right? Like why play him when you can play a guy like uh, Obeku Bell, the guy who dropped the Stanley cup, which means he had the Stanley cup. <laughs> um, or Simmons like, Zach like Ast- what, 34, 35. Exactly. He's an older guy and he yeah. definitely lost a step last year. Honestly, he was great. For, like in his first two weeks as a leaf, he broke his wrist and he has not been the same since. Like, we're talking, like, years ago, like, two or three years ago, or I think a couple of years ago that happened. But anyway, so that's, uh, like, that's that's a battle I'm interested to see, is that that bottom six and how that's going to shape out in, in Toronto is going to be interesting. Because, like I said, guys like Obey Kubel, Zach Aston Reese has been an, an absolute presence. He was, he was a presence yesterday in the game that he played. He was just very physical. So a, guy, a shutdown guy who just, he bangs bodies around, and he he's a guy you don't want to play against. And you know exactly, what that means. Yeah. Right. Like he's not a big goal scorer, not a big offensive guy, but he can really, really lay the boom for it. And he's not that big of a guy either. So that's really cool to see. Um, But yeah, uh, younger guys, too. Like Adam Gaudet is going to have a shot here. He's he's a guy that I believe has played in. Vancouver and Ottawa, is that correct? Um, Definitely those two for sure. He might have been somewhere else, too, but I don't remember. But definitely Ottawa and Vancouver. Yeah, and then, you know, Nick Abergesi, and a guy that I've barely mentioned, I mentioned him a little bit earlier, and I could have a breakout year here, is a guy like Nick Robertson, man. Like, Nick Robertson is a talented player. His brother, 
By the way, I it just let me just go on a tangent for a couple seconds here because I'm a little bit upset about this. His brother Jason is one of the best young players in the league. Like, yeah. seriously. And he doesn't have a contract yet. Have you heard anything about it? <laughs> Wait, what? Is, is he still fucking R, uh, RFA? Yeah. He's not at camp. But have you heard anything about that? But we're Nothing. hearing about fucking Rasmus Sandin on every TSN Sportsnet show that we see. But Jason Robertson, a guy who's probably worth like, let's call it eight, nine, maybe even $10 million. Because if Tim Stutzla and like Josh Norris are getting eight, Jason Robertson's getting at least nine. Oh, like, like You know what I mean? But yeah, we don't hear he drop like 40 goals last year. Like something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I had him on my fantasy team and I was not upset about it. No. Like, cause he popped off. Yeah. I think he went for like a 10 game stretch where he had like 30 points with like 12 goals or something. Stu- like it was insane. Like he went off last year and he doesn't have a deal, but you don't hear that. You hear the again, that, that's also okay. fucking like, Oh, I just, it pisses me off. And about Austin Matthews contract that he can't even talk to anybody about for a year. But here's, here's the thing. If that's just, that's standard for fucking TSN and Sportsnet in Canada. Like, like it's ridiculous just, though. Like I just, ugh. It, it, it's the same way that it's the same way with ESPN and fucking like LeBron James. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. will, they will, they will tell you for, they'll talk for four hours about him changing his fucking shampoo that he uses. And, and TSN and Sportsnet are the same with the Leafs and Austin Matthews. And it's not the Leafs or Austin Matthews' fault. It's just... The way it is. It's the it's way that... It's the what the it market is. desires, that's, I that's guess. That's exactly the thing. If TSN kicked off their fucking, you know, their hour with Jason Robertson doesn't have a contract, that's not getting them any fucking... Like, nobody's paying attention to that. You know what I mean? But, but they like, kick it seriously, off with, that's kind of crazy to me. Oh, absolutely! It's nuts. But they kick it off with they kick it off with what's Austin Matthews going to get on his next contract? Everyone sticks around to listen to it. Exactly. That's what the market requires or desires. Sorry. But yeah, let's just move down the depth chart here into defense. Uh, obviously, we know the guys who are going to be there are Morgan Riley, T.J. Brody, Justin Hole is going to be there. I know people don't want to hear that, but it's true. Jake Muzzin, once he's healthy, he'll be there. Mark Giordano signed his wonderful like eight hundred thousand dollar contract. He'll be there. Timmy Lilgren, after his hernia surgery recovery, he'll be there. And then there's a couple of options for defense on the back end here. So Jordy Ben is a Leaf. Victor Mete is also a Leaf. A couple of X-Habs. So, yeah, a couple of X-Habs, exactly. <laughs> and then whenever Sandine signs his deal, he, he, he'll be there. Because I don't think he's going to get offer sheeted. So I don't know what his strategy is. Like, I seriously don't. I mean, it also. so what was he making on his last deal? Well, it was a rookie contract, like... 900k because like i think what i think what he's pissed about is he was the guy who kind of went up and down from the leafs and and marley's when they had to like do stuff for cap flexibility and i think it actually like he got like like you get smaller paychecks when you're on an ahl deal right so he got like sewered for some money and i think he wants it a little bit he wants it back (laughs) you know what i mean like i I think that's yeah but you can because buddy like i hate to be that guy rasmus but we'll go with any mix of jordy ben and victor mete to replace you until you decide to sign your stupid contract <coughs> or if you don't and muzzin and Lilgren are back you're not playing anyway so yeah i just you better the start thing with, like, with him not getting off sheet is like it also depends what he you know is feels he's worth right well the, the because comparisons, if teams, are com- teams like, could Timmy be coming Lilgren's in with offer sheets and he's just years. not signing them what like, Timmy Lilgren's at 1.4 for two years. Yeah. Like, that's, 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 he, that's he, probably that's, what they offered him, too. Yeah, that's, probably, that's the ballpark he's down playing. In, uh, yeah. Down in L.A., those are a couple comparable contracts. Sean Dursey and Mikey Anderson. They both just yeah. signed for under 2 mil, too. And the rumor are, is that he's asking, like, 2.2, 2.3 plus. Like, See, so yeah, like, that's, that's ridiculous. No. <laughs> like, no, Rasmus. And it's not going to happen, man. Like... Yeah. If you really believe in yourself, then bet on yourself. Take a one-year deal at 1.5 and then fucking put your head down, go win a Stanley Cup, and then go get your contract if that's what you want. If that's what you think you can do. If that's what you think you're I mean, I think other teams might not be offer shooting him because they they might be offer shooting him at, you know, 1.4, 1.5, and he might be just fucking rejecting them. We don't know that. (laughs) Well, there is a deal on the table from the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? Oh, 100%. The offer sheet's... 
come out. It, it doesn't matter if he reject. Like we'll find out if it comes out, and then he rejects it. No offer sheet has come in that is over what the Leafs are offering him. Okay. That's the point here. Like no teams come in and said we'll give you one point five. No, exactly. No, but that's what I mean. Like if if the teams aren't offering him what he feels he's worth, anyways, then he's not going to sign them regardless. You know what I mean? So then just don't play for a season, lose an entire year of your de- development. Like as a defenseman, that's not something you should do. Straight I mean, up. Like, what's it? He's if he doesn't sign, he's going to end up back in Sweden, right? Probably. Yeah, and not play in the NHL and play against lesser competition. How fun. Anyway, let's move on here. Uh, no, no, I guess, I guess one last thing on sending there. Just yes or no. Uh, does he sign a contract when puck start drops on the regular season? Like, has he signed one by then? Yeah. Whether he's in the lineup or not is not the question. Just has he signed a contract when the regular season starts? Yes or no? No. No. No, I don't think he does, to be honest. I think that he's too stubborn. I think his camp is too stubborn. So, but they're going to have to do it at some point. And maybe it'll be a... Like a William Nylander last hour kind of thing. And if it is, I don't think he plays this this season very much at all, to be honest with you. Like, I would say the over-under, like, if if I'm a betting man and the over-under is, let's say, 20 games in a Leafs uniform this year. But I have until day two of the, of the regular season to make that bet. If he doesn't have his contract by game one. If I have until the second day to make that bet, I'm placing that bet that he plays under 20 games in a Leafs uniform this season if he doesn't have that contract by game one. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I get you. So, on to the real topic at hand here. (laughs) Goaltending. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm cautiously optimistic. Very, oh, yeah. very cautiously optimistic. And I'm not cautiously optimistic about Murray. Honestly, I think Samsonov's going to have a good year. I think Samsonov think... might jump in front of Matt Murray here. Interesting. I really do believe that. And here's why. Who was the goaltender for that World Junior Russia team that year that Shesterkin and Samsonov were on that team? Who Who started? Uh, I, I don't know the answer, but the way you're talking about it, it's probably going to be Samsonov, right? It was Samsonov. He was a higher draft pick. He was better as a goaltender in Russia. And I just think that it wasn't the spot for him in Washington. I think that that was, I think he's much younger. I think he's very, very technically sound from what all accounts. Everything I've heard is he's a very, very skilled goaltender. But he doesn't, he didn't have the passion and you know uh, what everybody gets when they (laughs) step into a Toronto Maple Leafs uniform you know how this works you are immediately ignited with the passion (laughs) do you guys have that trademarked yet the passion that unites us all I believe is the trademark yeah yeah but it's just the passion anyway so Moving on, and that's not a slight on Matt Murray, and I would not be upset if Matt Murray came out and had the season of his career, too, and put up a 9-2-5 save percentage and just bounced back like nobody's ever bounced back in the history of sports, but probably not, like, honest to God, like, I've been shitting on Matt Murray for three years now, I'm gonna keep it consistent, probably not gonna happen, like, I just don't see it, I will say this, he does look a lot healthier and a lot happier than he did when he was in Ottawa. And I think we well, can agree it, that when he was sent, sorry, off, here's, here, here, sent here. to be a goaltender for a shit team and everybody knew it. You're going to get five mil a year to just get lit up every night because yeah. we need somebody to do it. And you're going to be that guy. And it took a t- it, that takes a toll on your mental, man. Can't, come on. Oh, 100%. Like, here's the, if, if the Senators could put a shooter tutor in that, they'd just stick with a shooter tutor. And that's what they would have done for the past couple of years, right? Like, that's yeah. what they would have tried to do. Yes. Um, But, and I mean, the I'm going to fucking shit on Ottawa here, but anyone leaving that organization is going to be happier. Anyone. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) yeah. Straight up. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. All this hype out of Ottawa is just insane. Like, they just signed a bunch of fucking people to bad contracts, and and then just, like, now their team is fixed. No. That is not... 
That is not it how it works. It kills me when I see Ottawa fans going like, oh, like, uh, we went to the we went to a conference final, lost, tore it down, rebuilt it, and we're, we're now in a better position than the Leafs were in that time. And I'm like, like, what is in the water in Ottawa? Like, I don't like either of your teams. But the, drunk, man, I swear to God. I don't like either of your teams. Like, let me just be very clear on that. Like, I hate the Senators. I hate the Leafs. But, like, one of those teams is clearly and significantly better than the other. And it's not close. <laughs> no. Not even <laughs> Like, it's not. Like, I'm going and, like, to say they are probably going to get more points this year than they did last year. You fucking better. I say, but like, to be fair, that's also that's also like saying the Habs and or the Habs are you know might get more points than they will last year. It's like it would be hard to not. Yes. Like and, at this point. <laughs> anyway, but that's enough airtime for Ottawa. They they just similar to Nick Suzuki, they just don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I, I just wanted to touch on the fact that all the noise out of Ottawa is just, it's so funny to me. It's because noise. they're going to get, they're not going to make the playoffs again this year, and I, I can't wait for... Bro, they, they're not going to contend for a playoff spot no. this year. No, um, well, yeah, no, no, they're not. You are correct. Anyway, back back to the Leafs. I, that's kind of, we, we kind of just had a rundown of everything from forwards, defense, and and goaltending and i i i think on paper like if this makes sense on paper i'm not sure that overall it's a better team than it was on game one last year and i think we can agree that that uncertainty has to do with the goaltending that is because of the uncertainty in the back end we we've established that but i think it has an opportunity to be a more complete and in a more a better team come playoff. Like, I don't think they're going to get as many points as they did in the regular season last year, this year. But I think come playoff time, they have a little bit more opportunity to to, to succeed there, if that makes sense. That's more what this team looks to be built for. And we haven't even talked about this, but Kyle's du- Kyle Dubas' job depends on this team being successful in the playoffs this year. Because, oh man, oh man, he's so done if they don't make it past the first round. <laughs> okay, like, so here's the thing, so right? I, 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 don't, I don't see a scenario, unless the Leafs, at, by like the halfway point of the season, are 41-0, and 0, I don't see a scenario where he gets offered a contract during the year. And He's I think they're, they're, they're going to play it up as a, we don't want it to be a distraction thing, we'll worry about it at the end of the season. And that's and fair play, what you do. They just won't um, renew. Yeah, I, I don't think there will be an offer to renew before the end of the season, which means this season is entirely up. Like, his career is, in Toronto is dependent on this season. Yeah, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. And that's that's what everybody is kind of thinking, though, right? Is you really, like, your entire career is dependent on this season and you put your faith in Matt Murray and Ilya Simsonov? Like, that's what your career depends on now, man is Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov. Like, that was your real bet. Because it was clearly stated that he was given this information that he was not going to have his contract renewed, like, right after the season ended. Yeah. So he made the decision in net after getting that news. A I little mean, bit of an interesting tidbit there. Yeah, I mean, he's... <laughs> He's really living and dying by the fucking ex Sue Greyhounds, is he not? Living and dying by Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov. I don't know that I'd make that decision, but I, again, like we said in the last couple seasons that we had last year, or the last couple episodes that we had last last year before we had finished for the summer on this on this podcast here, is like, what else was he supposed to do in that? Yeah, like the, there was like, nothing sign, really on the market for him. Like, sign Jack Campbell to a Oh, like the same contract that Edmonton signed them to? Because I don't think that's in the cards if you want to sign the big four in two, three, and four years. Yeah. Right? Like, so it, it's, it's he hard. Had to play, he had to play the cards he was dealt, and he wasn't dealt very good cards. No, I think he, cards made, I think he made the best of, or almost the best of what he was dealt. 
And usually there's a goaltending carousel in the NHL, so I don't know what the hell happened last year. Like, it just kind of, the year that we needed a goalie, the year that our goalie was up, nothing. He was the only one up. Because, <laughs> like, I, mean, like, I mean, like, really, like, I know we talked about it a bunch, but, like, the, you know, best, in quotations, option on the market was probably Darcy Kemper. Yeah, and that's not a great, great option. Yeah, I, I saw that you're, you're still in the 1B pool there, for sure. Yes. Yeah, you're not even you're you're not even in the top ten no. of goaltenders in the league, right? Like, not even close. I don't think. Anyway, so that's all I got about the Leafs. So you are, are you got in? Uh, yeah, I think you've got. I think the Habs is going to be a lot of the same stories from last year. Of so young other guys than Jack and... guy, who else can take can take a position on the on the back end there? Out of these young guys that you say they're on not the end, everyday cause... NHL guys, but so really in terms of like. You know, a real NHL defense, and we have Mike Matheson, David Savard, uh, Joel Edmondson, and Chris Weidman. So we have like uh, we have four like those guys are going to be playing. So these two spots, I mean, Justin Baring, Jordan Harris, Arbor Jacki, Matthias Norlander, Caden Gooley is another one. He's uh, looked fucking phenomenal in uh, preseason as well. Um, I think like there's like those five guys for sure, and then there's other kind of. Uh, Kind of the AHL guys that bumped up last year looked like Corey Schoenman looked great. Uh, Xavier Wallet looked great last year. Uh, not exactly young guys, but still, you know, really solid players. I, if I had to put money on opening line, like opening night lineup, I would probably put Jordan Harris in. And I'm looking at this depth chart here. Anyway, from everything I've seen, I probably arbor jack eye like and that's not me just being like a hype man like he has been super impressive uh like this off season or this preseason like he's looked fucking great and yeah i think he's earned he's he's earned the chance to lose that spot that's what yeah. i will say but i mean i would not be surprised to see any of those six guys in the lineup uh, and like rotating through the lineup uh this year yeah that's fair yeah well, uh, one more thing we should probably get to on this podcast is uh, I'll let you do a little spiel for the Bitter Rivals podcast, Fantasy League. Yeah, so this year uh, we have launched a Fantasy League on Yahoo Sports. Uh, the link is going to be uh, on YouTube. It'll be in the description. Uh, and I'll swear we're just going to put it on all of our socials on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, so you guys who listen to us every week, and think we're fucking morons, and think to yourself, like, these guys have no idea what they're talking about, this is your chance to prove it. To fucking get in a fantasy league with us and prove that, you know, you're smarter than us. Or, what's more likely going to happen, we're going to prove, because me and you are going to finish 1-2 in this league. Like, straight up. Yeah. I don't, like, it's it's not going to be close. But we'll prove that we're actually, we know what we're talking about. We're actually fucking smart as shit. And uh, we are sorting out uh, some prizes uh, hopefully for at least top three we're going to try and get. Definitely you win it, we're getting you something for sure. Um, we haven't quite worked out the prizes yet, but we've got a season to do that, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, the link's going to be in the description. You can join the league, uh, compete against us. We're going to do a live draft. It'll probably be right before the season starts. Give us time to fill the league out. And uh, yeah, it's your chance to compete against us, win some prizes, and uh, let us fucking slap you around in a fantasy league. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There it is. And we, uh, like Catano said, we will be posting all of those things all over the socials. And you will have the opportunity to take us on. Keep the names PG, please. Oh, we yeah, will please. be discussing yeah. this on the podcast. <laughs> um, there's several ways to contact us. Instagram DMs, uh, Twitter DMs. Uh, you can send us. If, if, if you know us personally, just fucking like text just us. <laughs> ask us a question if you want to join and uh, we'll give you the information that we we have at yeah. that point in time. Anyway, thank you everybody for listening this week. Uh, you can find us everywhere. You already know where it is. And uh yeah, thanks for listening again this week, and we will see you next week for episode 66, and soon coming episode 69, just saying. Hey. hey. Anyway, thank you. Keep, uh, keep, us, keep us locked in next Sunday, too. Thank you. Bye now.